What's going on, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Other Side of the Firewall podcast, where we talk about the latest and greatest in cybersecurity news, as well as we highlight those movers and shakers and glass ceiling breakers, those people of color who've made it to the other side of the proverbial firewall. My name is Ryan Williams, and as always, I'm joined by Shannon Tynes. What's up? What's up? And LeVon Maynard. Welcome to the show. What is going on? Uh, please continue to like, share, subscribe uh, to the episodes. We greatly appreciate it. Uh, definitely tune in throughout the week. So we're a Monday through Friday podcast. Uh, Monday and Tuesday, we d- discuss topics uh, such as Interpol uh, uh, recovering a lot of money, uh, you know, Android and its uh, shenanigans, as I like to always put on Levon. Mm. Wow. Because <laughs> I'm an app- a Apple lover over here. Um, <laughs> And then today we have a discussion topic, right? So every Wednesday we, we try to have a discussion topic. So this one uh, deals with a uh, future no, a future passwordless or passwordless future. There we go. I'm talking like Yoda over here. Um, <laughs> so I just want to kind of get you guys, pick your guys' brains on how you feel about it. So uh, it comes from the Security Intelligence website, which sounds real official, right? Uh, it's entitled Why the Future Needs Passwordless Authentication. It was written by David uh, Bison. That's funny because we just told my Street Fighter. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So it kind of goes, maybe he's related to him. Um, so uh, not to read too much, but uh, to definitely frame it. So as of September, Microsoft users no longer have to rely on passwords when logging into their accounts. The Redmond-based tech giant noted that users could instead use its authenticator app, Windows Hello, a physical security key, or a... Uh, verification code sent via SMS. So uh, what they're trying to do is they're trying to get away from passwords um, because passwords are an issue when it comes to security, right? Not only people just maintaining good passwords, but um, it's just not the safest way to do things. Passwords get compromised all the time. What's easier to do uh, from a security standpoint is uh, multi-factor authentication. And that's what Microsoft is, uh, is pushing. Uh, and obviously they're a uh, tech leader uh, so this may go even further than that. Uh, I have two minds of it, um, so we'll get to me at, at at the end. But as as you all well know, I need some MFA in my life, <laughs> but I fight it like a plague. Uh, but how do you guys feel about this? Like, what what are your thoughts? Yeah, I was gonna say it's like yeah, you need some more of that MFA in your life. But it's a, uh, I think it's a it's a good uh, it's a good like direction that Microsoft's taking. Um, I guess authentication within uh, within technology. Uh, it's, it's, you know, it's important that obviously people rely on passwords. Uh, it was used to logging in with a password, but it's kind of like, I guess they're, they're kind of like old, I guess, old technology, so to speak. I mean, you can, you have so much more secure met- methods of, uh, authenticating people besides using the username and password, because those are more, more easy to be compromised. And, um, you know, at, at minimum, if you, um, aren't using like Windows Flow or something like that, that's more like passwordless. Um, at the very least, you should have like the MFA enabled where you actually have a secondary um, device that you're authenticating with to make sure that you are who you say you are. And as well as like protecting your account from somebody else that's just like out there in the web somewhere just happen to come across your password or guess your password. Because um, I think the article even talks about a lot of people end up using like the same password for multiple accounts. So they have like all kinds of, uh, you know, all their, uh, their banking account, they got their Netflix, they got their, uh, you know, whatever home security system, everything's set up with the same password because it's easy to remember or some like super simple password or they make some modif- small modification, change one number, but it's the same password across the board. So that's not really helpful. That's obviously if somebody gets, you know, your password and, you know, they kind of figure as soon as they get that main password or the first password, they're going to like, and they, the, the password doesn't work on a second account, they use their, uh, use their their software to just just kind of like uh just to to generate multiple passwords that are similar to that they're trying to change a couple of digits here and there and the system can run through that very quickly and uh discover your, your password that has like one digit that's, that's different so at the very least i say if you're not using like the mfa stuff you definitely should have like a password manager and you can use that to um you know make secure very unique passwords um and I, I talked about this before in a different podcast, but I, I do enjoy using, I use Edge browser and it does have a function on there too. It actually has a, a function we can, it recognizes when you go to a website, it's asking you to generate a password and you can actually ask it 
you know, it has pretty much has a password generator on in the browser embedded that will create a password for you that's super secure and make like a I don't know, 12 or 16 character password for you and it'll automatically pop it in there and then actually saves it into your uh, into your browser, into your uh, for your account. Um, and it sounds like, you know, to a typical person, that sounds like it's, oh, that's kind of like insecure of the browser now it's going to have my password. But um, the way that they do it, it's it's all encrypted. It's um, multi-level encryption. Um, I, I can't remember all the details off the top of my head, but it's it's very secure how they, they they maintain those passwords. It's not like something that's gonna be floating out there in the web that's like easy to access to anybody. Um, so just the fact that I, I think that it's good that Microsoft is kind of going in this direction to uh, kind of remove the password altogether and just hey, use your your uh, your person, your your face, use your thumbprint, use a token. Uh, things of that nature to kind of you you know get you to log in. You don't have to worry about having the password and forgetting your password, and then you have to manage all these passwords. So uh, making it simple, making it uh, uh, easy for the user, I think it makes it makes everybody happier and makes things more secure in the in the long run. But um, Shannon, what you what you think about this? So it, it, I, I'll tell you what really uh, kind of struck me. Um, I know I know we tell our listeners right like to be kind of cybersecurity smart right and so in this article they reference a survey from spec ops software and it said that 29.03 percent of people said they didn't use more than one password for their accounts and i know i know this was mentioned already right but 29 percent of people out there are saying they're not using more than one password for their accounts now think about this right so like all the accounts we use out there now right you got your whether it be Netflix and, and and you know what I won't even do the streaming stuff because that, that to me that's not really that important right like right. If, you can, I, if you see my playlist or whatever okay I'll be a little embarrassed that you see that I watch <laughs> Taylor, Taylor Swift concerts or something like that <laughs> you know what I'm saying I know like you were Swifty I knew it. you knew you knew it you knew it yeah, you guys knew but uh <laughs> but like but like if they're doing this across all their accounts so like almost I I don't know a bank even small banks now little credit unions little local banks everything they have an online presence you know what i'm saying like this is just the way that we're going and the fact that 29 percent of people don't use more than one password for their accounts that that kind of strikes me and in, in my and at my job i do training to tell people hey don't you know I, one of the things i say when i give my briefings <clears throat> Is that if I come across your desk and I see a sticky that has, you know, this certain combination of things that we that we use for our passwords, I'm fairly mm -hmm. certain that that's your password, right? Like right. I know I know what the username, like if I know who you are, I know what the username setup is, the user ID, how that's laid out. I could do that. Like so, I'm like, I I like this because it keeps people from writing that stuff down. You know, I don't have to go around. I, I could be confident that if I lift up a keyboard, I'm not gonna find a sticky under there with, with all these, you know, different characters and things like that. But um, I'm all for this. I'm all for this. Now for me, it would be a little inconvenient, right? Because if I gotta, if I have to do something, I can't have my phone in the facility I work. work there it in. is, yep. So, <laughs> so for me, it'd be a little inconvenient. Um, for me to go out there and with a lot of these now like they give you a time frame right like you got to enter this within the next five minutes so i have to get out to where my phone is come back in you know what i mean within five minutes and like i'll probably never beat that time you know what i'm saying right so, but um no i like the, i like the way this is going i, I like the way this is going right because just telling people they need to make a more secure password that's longer now because you know length of a password is really what's good for you right like you can have the numbers the letters uh, or uppercase lowercase special characters and all that i mean that's fine but if you only require eight characters for that that's easily uh, you can break that easier right even with all those different combinations than having 16 characters of whatever you want right like the length is is going to make it more secure you know what i'm saying um but eventually people do get to the point where again I have to say, stop writing it down on a sticky, putting it on your monitor, or don't put it under your keyboard. You know what I'm saying? So, um, I'm 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 glad that they're forward thinking like this. Microsoft is being forward thinking like this and saying, hey, we got to get away from this. You know what I mean? Let's do something different, um, something specific to you, because it mentions in there. I think it says like physical, physical something or other, right? It's it said in there. I can't remember exactly the wording. Physical security key is what they called it, right? Right. So, I mean, I, I I think it's I think it's a good way forward. You know what I'm saying, Ryan? What about you? Yeah, so I I can't disagree, right? I can't I can't say I can't be that that tenth doctor who says brushing your teeth is is wrong or whatever. Um, but you brought up you brought up my point. Uh, I I've, I work in uh, facilities that 
have security where I can't bring in devices. Uh, so for me, it's it's a little a little bit inconvenient, but at the same time, like this needs to be done. Like this needs to be the future. Uh, but just before or during the pandemic, I can't remember. Before we went down to minimum manning, uh, we were using Teams, and Teams requirement changed. It no longer was like so many hours or whatever. Like it, it became an interval that was very inconvenient. So you would see us all come to work, and then you see on your way sprinting back to your car, you see your your coworkers in different apartments also having to recover their uh, their password because it was like every sixteen or whatever. So like sometimes it hits you at the beginning of the day, sometimes it hits you in the middle of the day, but it had a time limit, so you had to get out of the facility, get to your car, to your phone. Hopefully your phone was on, because it's Florida, so the phone's probably off, so it wouldn't burn up. <laughs> get get the, uh, the key, write it down real fast, sprint back in the building. Hopefully you made the timeline. I did not meet it all the time. <laughs> so that, that part is a little inconvenient, right? But at, at the end of the day, like you said, like almost 30% of people don't have more than one password. So you kind of have to take it out of their hands. Um, they're just, they sometimes... Uh, you have to uh, Save the force the security. Yeah, you have to, <laughs> yeah, you have to force down to force you. them. Yeah, because they're not going to do it on their own. So I think it's a good effort. I hope I hope they do it across the board. I want everybody to do this. Like I want I want MFA everywhere, even though MFA is the bane of my existence. Because <laughs> it'll keep me safer. I think I've had three accounts breached this this year alone. I think it was my Netflix. It was my email, and it was was not a uh, not a Microsoft email. It's a different email, and there was another one. Uh, it was an Ubisoft account that, that no one no one uses an Ubisoft account. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like U Ubisoft makes you make the account <laughs> to, right. to have access to like Assassin's Creed. And then years later, you get compromised. You just like, yo, and they took over everything. I had to I had to call Ubisoft and talk to the tech department to get back, back into the things I didn't care about. I just didn't want somebody else to have my account. Right. Because who knows what they could have done, what kind of attack vectors from that account they could have uh, they could have used, but they put more security on me than the person who stole my account. <laughs> so I, I think MFA is, is, is definitely uh, a, a necessity. In my case, if they do go the physical key route, like I would, I would, it would be a pain, but I wouldn't mind carrying RSA, RSA key into a facility because that has no Wi-Fi, has no Bluetooth. Mm -hmm. um, like yeah. that, that would definitely help me out in, in, the, in the long run. Uh, and I could bring that in the facility it won't be confiscated and I can use that to, to get me in to authenticate me uh, and what have you. Cause the, the SMS will not work in that situation. And then mm -hmm. you work, if you work around air gap systems you don't have access to your email either, right? Uh, depending on what type of facility you work in. So a, a physical key will probably work out a lot better um, in those situations. So I'm all for it. Like hopefully Microsoft, when they, when they implement it which they've already started um, hopefully it goes full bore and the, the rest of the, uh, the industry adopts it. Because it, it's definitely a necessity. Like passwords are getting us in trouble, um, and every time I every every time I log into a new browser, the browser will tell me like, hey, "When your password has been compromised?" <laughs> like, which one? <laughs> which, which one has been compromised? Quick. Yeah, <laughs> you're like, mm, I don't know. <laughs> Just change them all. That's that's very inconvenient. Uh, and, it, and I don't like the password generators uh, only like they are very secure, but only because it does cause people to write stuff down. Like if I have 16 string characters, like I'm not going to remember that when I'm not around my browser to recover it. So I'm going to write it down mm. and then mm. I'm, I'm going to get compromised. So, yeah, just push MFA. And then in, in situations like uh, we work in, in facilities where we can't reach it. Um, I don't know where to find like I found a box of RSA keys when I worked uh, in Virginia. Because nobody wanted them things. <laughs> they shoved it underneath a desk, open it up, and it's all these keys, and they all have different numbers, and they're all flashed. I'm like, is this? <laughs> I, know I, I know I ain't the bomb. Is that the bomb? <laughs> right. <laughs> so I don't know how they would get those to you. That is a, a interesting question. Like, how, where do you where do you find said RSA key or or whomever um, authentication key? I don't know how that could be implemented, but I think that would be a good idea for uh, DoD. Um, to, to implement somehow, maybe wear it on your lanyard. I don't know. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. Those things are really oh, smart. Something crazy. Yeah. yeah. I used to have a, a RSA token uh, for a couple, a couple of jobs I worked at. You can put them like a little keychain. They're like pretty small, but just like a little, okay. little LCD screen. It has a bunch of numbers on it that pop up in a yeah. random order, whatever it is for your, um, pretty much like your, uh, yeah, for your secondary factor, se you know, second factor authentication, multi-factor. It just pops up like when you browse, you log into something and it asks you for mm -hmm. your, uh, the, six digit code, whatever it is, 
you just look at yeah. your RSA token and you know in input the numbers that are generated at that time. Yeah, but I think that I think that that'd be a great idea. Um, yeah, to to implement because um, yeah. it's something you something you have right. So mm -hmm. they like the the only burden I think will fall on uh, SMS if they if they go that route will be carriers because we talked about uh, I don't remember if it's T Mobile or Verizon, but they're having issues with uh, clone phones. Remember that mm -hmm. that was a, like right. months ago. Uh, where they're duplicating SIM cards, um, right? Which was like an inside job or of some sort was happening. So that that could get you in trouble. But then again, you're only targeting a certain amount of people. They're not gonna they're not gonna uh, clone 10 million phones. That's not a thing, right? Right. Like, it's yeah. just the production alone would would like not be worth their time. So if you're being specifically targeted, that could be a thing. Mm -hmm. um, but then it comes down to it, a smaller footprint. It won't. It will just be that one person. It won't be. Like in this case, there there are um, uh, spreadsheets full of passwords from from uh, uh, previous compromises on dark dark web. So that's what I'm seeing when I when I log into a new browser and it tells me something's been compromised. Most likely, it's an old password that's associated with the username I just used out there somewhere. So someone has a spreadsheet with one of my passwords on it, uh, mm -hmm. which hopefully I'm not using any longer. Probably not. Um, but that, that's happening to tens of millions of people. Um, so. Just make them not don't just make them not exist anymore, and we'll have that issue. Passwords are no longer a thing; you don't yeah. have to worry about them. Mm -hmm. That's the truth. I like it. I like it. Yeah, the, the MFA uh, champion over here. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Those are some MFA. Uh, but yeah, they, they, I, I'm going through accounts now. Like as I log into accounts, like I, I double check to see if they have an MFA option. Uh, just tired of being compromised. Yeah. Um, yeah. Same here. And that's it's been um, even yeah, I think I told you guys before and not getting sponsored, but I use the Nord VPN and I think they actually just recently in implemented like a, a, a multi-factor authentication and just got a prompt today to say, oh, do you have an authenticator app? You can use this. Um, I was like, oh, hell yeah. And I did that right away. As soon as it popped up, I was like, enable that because they used to just use a username and password. And if somebody happened to have my password, they could just get up on there. And right. uh, the way the system set up, it didn't have any, you know, I don't. You know, maybe I haven't looked hard enough, but I don't think they had any kind of security mechanism that somebody logged in to some other location. If it like pop up on my uh, account and say, oh, somebody logged in from here into your account. So right. uh, now I have that extra barrier protection. So I'm glad for that. And just like you said, I do the same thing for any account that I see that has option for multi-factor. I, I enable that right away. And uh, yeah. to your point with the SMS, I, I definitely try to avoid SMS if, if at all possible, uh, even though it's like, it's like, uh, it's less secure but it's still secure i mean you have to be like specifically targeted like you were mentioning for like sms yeah. like uh compromise somebody actually have your clone your phone they have to like kind of know you or like maybe know your information have your information some, somewhere pulled up and have your password already and they're like uh and then they're going to try to socially engineer like some sort of a, a customer service agent agent at a a call center and like hey this right. is me let me go ahead and get the the sim swapped out to this one and then got to go through this whole rig and remote but it's more likely less likely for that to happen Unless you're like some, you know, Jeff Bezos or somebody, or uh, right, right, um, you know, uh, Bill Gates or somebody that's like, oh yeah, let's try to get Bill Gates' account. And let's like, act yeah. like we're, you know, him and try to get you're, his. Uh, yeah, you know. you're you're a person who you don't even use your own phone. Your assistant, right, your right, phone. your assistant. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you call in like you're, you're I'm, that I'm Bill important. Gates' assistant. Yeah, <laughs> right. So yeah, right. that's that's my thoughts on that. But yeah, though, though my only issue, uh, not to belabor the point, is the MS SMS is kind of uh it's not as flexible enough for me so like yeah uh, i have it set up for my sony account so i get the message when my son uh needs to log in sometimes and i'm eight hours in the future right so i could be right knocked out dead to the world sleep and i could <laughs> i wake up to a text like hey dad can i have the uh <laughs> the code yeah man that was right. four hours ago <laughs> like, right yeah i'm That's so sorry because you can't add more than one line right so it's, yeah e email would be easier uh right. in those cases so yeah i have the same problem with my yeah, with my wife's account, some, I try to get on some of her, like she has like, uh, I don't think she has like the, the the prime video account or something like that, it's underneath her. But yeah, whatever, I try to log into her account on like a different device. And it's like, oh, dang, it's like MFA, like SMS, and it sends her a text. And either, you know, either she might be asleep or she might be at work or something like that. And I'm like, oh, damn, like, I got to like message her. She got to message me back to give me that code real quick before it like the time's out. But uh, right. it's a little bit of, a little bit of a hassle, but I agree with you 100% on that. Yeah. Yeah, but I, I, I definitely thought it was interesting. We'll, we'll see what the, the future holds. Uh, again, uh, humongous uh, corporation, probably, I think it's the richest corporation, right? If that's, I don't even know, has the most value, I wouldn't say, because it's not I one person, so. right? 
I yeah. think it's the, the most valuable cor- corporation in the world right now. So if they, they want to go that check, route, yeah. it's not hurting anybody. Just that, that the rest of the world go that route as well. So it's mm-hmm. interesting to see. Uh, I'm sure in, in the next few months, it'll, it'll be a thing. Um, definitely continue to tune in throughout the week. Please like, share, subscribe. Uh, the, to continue to get this content. You won't get it anyway, but it will help us out. <laughs> <laughs> if you like, share, subscribe, subscribe. Leave us a review on uh, your podcast uh, platform of, of choice. I actually see those. I only have two of those after a year. <laughs> they both of them were positive. Leave me, leave me mm. some more. <laughs> nice. I like it. Um, but yeah, definitely continue to tune in. We're over a year now. So we're like a year and a month into the game. Uh, we're in the almost... 150s on episodes so next week will be in the 150s so definitely continue to hit us up uh we greatly appreciate it show us that love hit up the website www.theothersideofthefirewall.com which i will start doing something with in the near future where you get to all of our socials you get me up personally uh, i'm pretty active uh on linkedin and twitter at ry ry security guy that's r-y-r-y security guy i'm also on tiktok and clubhouse and you levon you can hit me up on the twitters at levon maynard there it is stay safe stay secure Take care.